Well, hi everyone, it's Tabitha Jane. I am here at the Wright County Justice Center here in the middle of nowhere, little house on the prairie land. And I got called out of my YouTube winter hibernation because there was supposed to be all of these things. Now, what was announced, I can't find. So I went inside and I printed everything out. Now we can come over here to this side and that's the end side of the courthouse. And then you go over here to the actual courthouse itself. And then inside has all of the courthouses and areas for mediation, etc., etc. You got that. You got the flag. Got all the glory blowing in the wind. Got all of that. Okay. So I could do like a veritable Easter egg hunt out here because I'm absolutely looking all over for something specific. So as y'all know, I do. I come out here to the Wright County Justice Center and I look for the truth. And I am looking for something very specific, something very specific, which has been stated over and again. So when I saw the Twitter verse coming alive yesterday, I went onto the Twitter and I did not find what was stated. I know that a certain person has said that certain things have came out of this courthouse before. And again, I just went in and looked all over the Wright County Justice Center and found this. Okay, we're going to go here. We're going to go. We're going to play this little game all out. Okay, so basically there was something news that popped up and I like to go and get the documents from the source, making sure that nobody has altered any documents, etc., etc. Printed out from the source so that I'm making sure I have everything. So on January 29th, 2024, we have the order of the motion to compel. Okay, nothing big, not what I'm looking for. Now, the judge, which is surprising to me on the timing as I've not... Um, I've not released parts two and three of what happened in the last hearing, but um, basically the judge released an order on motions to compel. The last hearing was supposed to have settled these issues, but the judge listened to both sides and stated that they would make a decision and have it for the next scheduled hearing. So I was surprised to see something. Nonetheless, as I'm looking all over, and I mean, I'm looking all over. We, I mean, basically here in Minnesota, we usually have about 52 inches of snow. So I'd be about covered in snow. It'd be freezing. But right now it feels like a balmy spring day. Okay. So basically I could pretend like it's Easter and go and have an Easter egg hunt looking for what I'm looking for because I'm still looking, looking, looking all over the Wright County Justice Center, looking because... This is what it says is here. That Do I need to go and dig up these leaves? Do I need to go and look behind that pillar? Because nowhere does it say that Katie Joy has been determined to be a journalist. Okay? She's said it. Others have said it. Others have said that she's been determined to not be a journalist. And I am telling you that I can spend the next six to eight hours where I've just been rustled out of hibernation to make sure that I'm not missing anything, but I'm gonna tell you right here from the judge so that there is no confusion, unless you can see it here. Do you see it here? Do you see it there? Do you see it anywhere? No, because here it goes. On, and I'll go through all of the new documents and everything and the other parts of the hearing and stuff, but uh, like I said, I've been in hibernation. Nonetheless, we have item seven here in this judge's dissent uh, by Judge Carrie Wilson that, uh, or sorry, Carrie Willis, that um, she, po she put out yesterday. And here in section seven, where I have highlighted, here it goes. Look at it from the source. This is the truth. What she's saying, what others are saying, what the Twitter verse is saying is not true. This is the truth right here from the Wright County Justice Center. Okay, you can see my shadow with my messy bun and everything. See, messy bun on top of the head. Says, defendants claim that plaintiffs are not entitled to much of the information sought. Sorry. By plaintiffs because 
of journalistic privilege and or because the information qualifies as journalistic notes. The issue of whether or not Ms. Paulson is a journalist has not yet been presented to or decided by this court. To the extent that the defendants maintain that the sources of some of this information are confidential informants or qualify as journalistic notes, they can provide that information to plaintiffs pursuant to a privilege log in accordance with Minnesota uh, Revision of Civil Procedure 2602 par paragraph F. Okay, here it is. It's not over there. It's not under here. It's not underneath this decorative grass. It's not behind that pillar. It is right here by the judge stating that Ms. Paulson has not ever, nor was yesterday, nor was six months ago, nor was almost two years ago when this was filed, ever declared by a judge that she is in fact a journalist. Now, to play both sides and to be very fair here and non-biased, it does not say that she is not a journalist either. It is stated here and dated by Judge Gary Willis on 12924 that the court, this court, the Wright County Justice Center, which has jurisdiction over Ms. Paulson and the pending litigation, says that the issue of whether or not Ms. Paulson is a journalist has not yet been presented to or decided by this court. Okay? I can't believe how many people continue to take bits of information and make it salacious enough that they can go and do lives and whatnot and try to get um, super chats and whatnot off of mistruths. I have went and I have taken every single bit of information and went through it with a fine tooth comb to show the facts and the truth. And yes, they get taken and they get taken out of text and whatnot, but this is the truth. This is from the Wright County Justice Center. That means that what I am saying and going to procure in real time is the truth. And once again, the issue of whether or not Ms. Paulson is a journalist has not yet been presented to or decided by this court. There is nothing else. You want me to dig up that tree over there and see if it is ruled that? You want me to go up on the roof and see? I could do that. I could totally climb the roof because the deputies right now are looking at me like I'm, you know, a little bit cray cray. I think it's because my messy bun has like some pieces of it falling out. Nonetheless, I will be able to shed light on this a little bit more as I fully come out of hibernation because essentially in the last hearing, um, Amber, AKA Xeno warrior princess basically played this out. She said, okay, if Katie joy is indeed a journalist, if she is indeed a journalist and we're going to play this game out, we're going to say that, oh, she doesn't have to answer this because journalistic privilege. Oh, she doesn't have to do that because of ha ha journalistic privilege right? If, if indeed that is going to be the consideration and the defense to not um, answer this, to, to not partake in this, to be able to say this was this, that if indeed that is true, and if indeed she was in fact a journalist, then she would in fact have a journalist privilege log. If indeed that was true and that was um, determined, then fine. Then it, she would need to produce said journalist log. She would need to to provide that, that if in fact she is a certified journalist. And, and I don't even know that there is such a thing as a certified ju uh, journalist. I think that what we are looking at in so many aspects of this case are things that are yet to be determined because as always, our technology, our social media is is ahead of where our courts are. So So where is a journalist? I mean, if you are a paralegal, we'll just use that because this is something very easy and relevant. If you're a paralegal, you need to have went to classes. Um, I think, what is it? 200 hours, something like that. Or you need to, st to, to have been a part of a program for a paralegal that you sit for, I think it's 200 hours. And then, you know, you can 
obtain certificates, something, something like that, where you are indeed a paralegal. You can say that you went to paralegal school, whatever, but did you finish? Did you get the certificate? Are you working in the law? Yeah, all of that good stuff. Um, let's say nursing. Okay. I know that from long ago and far away. Um, I can't just, you know, walk up and go and take the NCLEX, which would, which would certify me as an RN or, or, um, before that you could go as an LPN. Well, you still could, but you, for the purposes of this discussion, saying that, um, you can't just walk up and take the test. You have to have shown that you, um, did a, a program, an accredited program that, um, made you eligible to sit for this exam and indeed take this exam. And then by this exam, um, whether or not you pass makes you, um, an RN or LPN and you're certified by the state, let's say real estate, um, a real estate agent. Um, I went to real estate school, but I did not go and get my um, license. So I'm not a real estate agent. I'm not a registered real estate agent, but I went to real estate school because way back in the nineties, you know, we were investing in real estate and I wanted to understand the paperwork and process more. So drawn out there, but just saying, okay, is there a process then? Because we have people that go to school for journalism, but we also have freelance journalism and we, we have people who, who might just be amazing at what they do and covering a story and bringing that to the people. And they now have an option to go on uh, the platform on social media and bring it, bring the story that gets followers. Does that make them a journalist or do you have to go to school to be a journalist? Where is, is all of this? And I can only imagine that the judge herself is trying to, to research that. And by putting this in there and being as ambiguous to match Amber's argument as to say, okay, well, that's not been decided. And here's a solution that indeed, um, these things can be provided by a privilege log that, um, whether or not she is or isn't, then she can provide a privilege log. Now, um, what happened in that hearing when this was brought up is that, um, Katie's attorney basically said, Katie doesn't have anything like a privilege log. She doesn't have these things because they're, because Amber, you know, alluded to saying, you know, look, there should be a rough draft. There should be a template. There should be, um, something here to say, how did you get this to go here? How did you get, make this connection to go there? Um, and her attorney says, well, there's nothing there. So her attorney, in not so many words said, there is no privilege log. There's not going to be a privilege log. There's not going to be rough drafts. Katie Joy posts excessively. That's the gist of it. That's the gist of it. And this is where the judge sat up there and the judge's job is to be neutral, fair, um, at this point where she's trying to get everybody to come to a solution so that with the hopes that the two parties can, um, come to a decision before the excessive cost and, um, uh, uh, of a trial. Okay. All of this is to avoid going to trial. That's, that's what all of the pre-court, um, posturing is, is doing here. And I've not seen a court draw it out to the time frame that they are. We can definitely say that the pandemic had its hand in it, whatnot, where things are drawn out. But when you have the attorneys arguing to get the solutions to the motions that have been, um, outstanding for very for many many months and they think that the conclusion is going to happen on that um and it was a two-hour hearing i know that i was personally frustrated when the judge said oh all right you want me to make a decision well yeah that well i'll i'll make it well the holidays are coming mm, how about some time in march I was surprised because I thought that that was what that hearing was to do, was to bring all of those outstanding um, discussions and orders to to a, a point where then each party could move forward. That did not happen. So in the judge's um, research, we have this. I, I am really, like I say, I'm honestly not impressed. I don't know what all the ruckus was other than there's not much going on in the world. Um, I think... I think this says a whole lot of nothing, um, but as each side 
in this last two years has each tried to take the stance of whether or not Ms. Paulson is indeed a journalist. I think that it is important to um, have the facts once again stated that the issue of whether or not Ms. Paulson is a journalist has not yet been presented to nor decided by this court. Once again, signed by Judge Carrie Willis on 129, 2024. So there you go. Um, I have my projects in the work, in the works, um, hibernating and all that good stuff. But all the information and all of the, all of the stuff will be presented to you as I come out of hibernation. So I hope that you're all well on this balmy spring day here in Minnesota. Here I am. I hope that wherever you are, you're good because it's apparently spring. And again, nowhere, not here, not there, not in a tunnel, not with scrambled eggs, not with green scrambled eggs and ham, has a judge ever said or not said if Katie Joy Paulson is or is not a journalist, folks. Here you go. Here you have it right here in Minnesota. Uh, thanks for all the love, and I hope that you're all doing well here in 2024.